This is sort of a quick tip type of tutorial dealing with improvements or workflow enhancements to do with rendering or the rendering process in Blender. The first one that we're going to take a look at is when you have multiple cameras and you want to render a bunch of still frames. Blender doesn't have a batch function built into it or the ability to render a bunch of cameras. It's sort of a shortfall of the default software. And you don't want to go searching for a plugin. You just want to be able to use what's here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I have three cameras set up and each one of those has a particular view that I'm wanting to render. And let's say I'm going to go to bed and I just want to render a bunch of these camera stills. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over and come to your first camera and you're going to come down to the timeline. So I'm in the layout view so we get a basic timeline and I'm going to hold the control and option keys down and that's going to allow me to expand this out so I can very easily gain access to individual time markers in the timeline. And I'm going to move my current time marker to one. And then what you're going to do with the first camera selected is you're going to come down to marker and you're going to invoke bind camera to markers. Then you're going to come to the second frame and you're going to invoke camera two as the active camera. And then you're going to repeat that bind a camera to markers come to three and we'll do the third camera that activates the camera come to bind camera to markers so now as you come to the timeline it cycles between those cameras and I usually leave zero open so that I can just come up and test cameras here because once you've bound a camera to a particular frame it's going to always want to jump back to that even if you've switched to something else until you bind it again then what you do is you just come over to output properties and you would render one two in this particular case frame three and render animation and then that would kick out those individual frames for you you would need to remember to file an output location for those so that's just something to remember So the next tip deals with the rendering process itself. If I turn on the rendering, I'm using cycles. It progressively begins to render and refine the image. We have a lot of noise up front. And with ray tracing, we're always trying to get rid of noise. That's sort of the end goal of getting the rendering to the point where we're not seeing lots and lots of noise. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes just a little bit of noise in a rendering makes it look organic and more natural because we have noise reduction that prevents you from having to spend many, many extra hours rendering. But it's too perfect sometimes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it is that you can have custom noise reduction pretty easily by retaining just a little bit of noise, but still having the benefits primarily of noise reduction. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to render this floor area. So I'm going to render just sort of this region and I'm going to increase my resolution just a little bit. We're going to render just that area and I have it set. So I'm going to go to only 300 samples. Okay. So we'll go ahead and render. We'll begin to see all that beautiful noise start to go away and progressively refine. So here we have the final rendered image and it's had the denoising applied to it. It looks nice, but honestly, it's just a little bit too perfect. And I would like to have it be slightly more organic by reintroducing a little bit of the noise. We could save the denoised version and the original unnoised version, go into Photoshop and put them together, but it would be nice if we could have it always set so that Blender would custom denoising for us. So I'm going to close this down. We're going to come over to compositing and we're going to turn on use nodes. Now, the first time you do it, you won't see anything here. As soon as you turn it on, these two nodes, render layers and composite will become available. And we also want to be able to see the image that we're editing. So we're going to come up and invoke backdrop. Now I'm going to tell you that you will also often need to add another node here called viewer because the image won't always pop in the background. So I'm just going to tell you that it did right now, but it doesn't always do that. So what we want to do is we want to come up here 
and drive that, and there it becomes available. But it's in the incorrect position for what we're going to do. So let's do this. Let's come up here and add a mix. And I'm going to drop that right here. Now, when we look at render layers, image refers to the denoised final image. And we're driving that into the first image slot. And then we have noisy image, which we're going to drive into the second image slot. Okay, and right now with factor being one means the noisy image is going to be 100%. We're not going to see any of the denoised image, but we're not seeing that right now because viewer is not tied in to here. So I'm going to take this image and also drive that into the viewer. Now, I need to get the image that we want to view in the screen. And you can see I'm on my laptop. I'm just using my trackpad here. When I'm scrolling around using my trackpad, it's moving the nodes. It's not moving the image. So if you're in node, just come over here down to view. And you, you just need to tap the N key in case that's not open. Come down to the view tab and then click move. Just click it once and immediately start moving. And you'll see that move. Now I want to zoom in to a factor of two so that we can see this even a little bit better. So we can clearly see some of the noise. We can see some of the noise here and we can see some of the noise in the ground. And a factor of one means all of the weighting of the mix goes into the second image slot, which in this particular case is noisy image. So if I take factor and take that to zero, then we see completely just the denoised image. So a factor of 0.5 would mix the two, and you would get just a little bit of noise reintroduced back into the denoised image. Now, it'll totally depend on how much noise your final image had. I still think maybe there's a little bit too much noise up here, so I think I'm going to drive that down to a value of 0.3, which is going to still bias it mostly towards the denoised image. The next tip that we're going to take a look at sort of follows on from this because it turns out that you may want to save this now and you may want to use this just by default without having to constantly come in and set these nodes up for each scene that you're going to do. So tip two is how to embed all of this into a default file that you can use with each rendering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to save these by copying them. So I'll bring up the context menu and I'm going to copy and I'm going to save my working file right here with this science fiction corridor scene and I'm going to create a new file and it just has the very basic sort of default settings. I'd like to have that compositing node set up in place by default so I don't have to think about it. I've copied it from the other file and I'm going to come over to the compositing tab and I'm going to paste that. And then I'm going to invoke use nodes. So there we have that. And make sure you turn on backdrop because that's a setting and it'll save that. So now I'm going to come back over to layout. All you have to do is come over to file down to defaults and invoke save startup file. And every new scene that you create will now have that as a startup. It'll be built into your brand new file. So what I typically do too, is there are a couple of other things that I also happen to do. For instance, in terms of settings, light paths, I always set my indirect to 12 and my filter glossy down to zero. I can set those to be part of my startup file, save those. Those are now part of my startup file. And in fact, I also go a step further. There are a couple of things that I do with my file. I don't like the way that these default three objects are set up. So I'm going to rename default collection here, and I'm going to call this camera, and I'm going to put in another one called lights, and I'm going to move my light there. And I'm going to take cube and put it in the main scene. But I also like to have a target. I like my light and my camera targeted. So I'm going to press shift A to add a new empty into the scene. And I'm going to call this light target. And I'm going to take my light and I'm going to have a track two assigned to it so that it will be targeting that object. Okay, so we're going to come up to camera and we want to do the same thing right there. Shift A 
and I need to move that up into the correct collection. And we're going to call this camera one target and do the same thing. We're going to add a track to assign that. There we go. So now those changes can become over and made part of your default start file. So you can go through and customize your scene with whatever things. For instance, I like to change my units to the units that I like, etc. So now if we create a new file from scratch, I'm not even going to bother saving that. Ta-da! There is our new file. And we also have compositing. All of that is now built in as your default file to begin working with. So now you'll get just a little bit of noise back into your denoised image. And to me, it will look a little bit more organic and natural.